first glance, it's hard to understand what Donald Glover is trying to do here because his version of Mr. and Mrs. Smith seems just so different in every way possible from the 2005 original movie. But when I looked back at the original film and I discovered that that was actually supposed to be a movie about couples therapy, right, just through this Hollywood lens of assassins, but yet they totally ended up not doing that, I now, I was able to understand what Donald Glover was, is, is trying to do here. And I think he succeeds wildly. Although we're going to find out if intellectualism is as saleable, sellable, uh, as, as sex and glamour. <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 it's a big risk from Donald Glover, but I think in the world of streaming, you know, I think intellectualism does go a long way uh, and craft, right? We would hope, one would hope. But I think that he's fighting an uphill battle here, not only because he's decided to strip out all the glamour and a lot of the sex appeal, not that this isn't still a very romantic show. I love this show. I binged it in two days once I understood what Donald Glover and company are trying to do. But I hope that you get to the point where you understand what they're trying to do. I hope you try the show. I don't know if everyone's even gonna try it. I'm gonna do my best to sell you on it and to fill in the blanks. Cause again, I just think it's so brilliant. But it, it, it's, 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 a, it's a bold strategy. Uh, that's the second time, I mean, I, I love bold swings. Uh, I mean, I think they're fantastic, but they're very risky as Hollywood has found out, particularly as of late, as you get, I think more and more people given a little bit more free reign, particularly as Hollywood try to, to figure out, you know, what you want as, uh, you know, audiences, tastes dramatically change, how to stand out in the streaming world. And also once somebody, you know, everybody, every people are fighting for territory in Hollywood. So when you get a talent like Donald Glover, you know, you are tempted to give him a blank check. But we've been talking about whether or not, you know, creative, creative people have their business hat on. You know, I, I mean, I hope, I hope this show does well. All right, so where should we officially start? That's how I just wanted to preface this uh, review. So where I want to officially start our conversation is a question. And that is, when is the last time that you watched the movie, Mr. and Mrs. Smith? For me, it was back in 2005 when it came out. And everybody pretty much, I mean, not everybody. I mean, a shockingly num low number of people actually see movies for them to do very well. But people who liked movies went to see Mr. and Mrs. Smith. It was a huge deal. And it still has, it still has name recognition to this day, even though I, for instance, have never had any urge to revisit it. I didn't even watch it again to prepare for this, but I did do my research and I'm glad that I did because it made me better understand what Donald Glover and company decided to do. Uh, but the movie, Mr. and Mrs. Mrs. Smith is iconic, not so much for the movie itself, but because of all the drama that was created. Now, at first, everybody was excited because it was this pairing of Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie, both at the height of their careers, and in fact, it gave both their careers new life. Uh, but then, while they were making the movie, they had a real life affair, and they were quite blatant about it, and, you know, kind of cruel to Jennifer Aniston. That's where the Brad Pitt is missing a sensitivity chip quote came in. Uh, when they did that that cover for a magazine with them playing family, uh, when they were really playing family behind the scenes, and uh, you know it led to Pitt and Aniston breaking up, and many people loved that couple too. It, you know, Team Angelina and Team Jennifer were formed, and it was really a fairy tale, but a, a tale of two fairy tales. And fans picked which fairy tale they liked better, and they were upset. You know, many of them were upset with the fairy tale that was the one that won out. And that fairy tale didn't even last, you know, as we all know. And recently, Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston were talking backstage. Whenever, whenever Jennifer Aniston and Brad Pitt interact in a positive way, people are like, oh, are they going to get back together? Because people to this day are still Team Angelina and Team Jennifer. It really was a big deal. And, and as I said, still is. And in fact, all three of them are still largely associated with what happened with Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Uh, but yes, it was also a movie. And it was kind of like War of the Roses, but with super hot, sexy stars. Uh, and that's really, I think, how everybody views the film. It's how Hollywood came to view and sell the film. 
But Simon Kinberg's pitch, yes, this was Simon Kinberg's first original script. It's like, it was like his film, it was a script that got him into the business, which I think is fascinating. And his idea, based on interviews I saw, was that he had some friends who were in couples therapy, and he decided what if he did a Hollywood twist on that, where they were actually both assassins for rival organizations, and they didn't know the other one was an assassin, and when they found out, they fought each other. And that's a great pitch. I love it. But I think that anyone who's seen the movie knows that they did not keep that couple's therapy thread, which is why Mr. and Mrs. Smith is a fun, sexy movie, but it's not a smart movie. You know, it didn't keep that intellectual thread. But Donald Glover, I think that's what most appeals to him about Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And he very much has that with his show. So he is, he is taking key members from his Atlanta team, uh, writer Francesca Sloan and director Hiro Mirai, uh, onto this streaming version of uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, and they flipped the 2005 movie on its head because they have pulled out all the fantasy and they've instead made a very grounded Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And you might be like, who the heck wants that? But the fun thing about it is, is that now you can see yourself as John or Jane Smith. And I think that's really a cool twist. Also, it's not just couples therapy. It's focusing instead on relationships in general, which gives them so much more to explore. And they use the missions to highlight and fast forward a real life relationship, the different stages and issues that we all experience. Uh, so for instance, some of the things that they highlight are, and I, if you, I mean, it took me a couple episodes to get what they were doing. And then I was like, oh my gosh, this is brilliant. And, but I wish it was set up a little bit better going into it because not everybody gets a few episodes in to understand what you're trying to do. But if I let you know what they're doing up front, maybe you'll give the show a little bit more leeway. So they talk about, for instance, careers. What's the ambition of each uh, member of the party? Uh, what's it like working with a significant other? Couples that live and work together have a tough time, as we all know, no matter what their job is. Uh, and not everybody who has the same career idea. People, some people live to work, some people work to live. What if you put two people like that together? Uh, how much do couples share with each other about themselves? How do they handle finances, extended family like parents, whether or not to have children? To see these conversations through the lens of assassins and secret agents, oh, I mean, I just thought that was incredible. It was just so well done the way they set it up. Uh, on that note, one of the missions, uh, John and Jane find themselves protecting a high profile target who ends up acting like a big baby. So it really explores whether or not they want to have children and what kind of parents they both would be, but with this adult who they're trying to keep from getting killed. And it was both brilliant and hilarious. That's the episode, episode five, where I really, where the show in large part clicked for me. I was like, oh my gosh, I finally get it. And this is amazing. I was enjoying it up until then. I binged this. I binged this in two days. Uh, and you will be able to as well because they're releasing it as a binge. But that's where, I, I mean, I was loving it, but that's where I understood it was brilliant in episode five. I liked it as soon as episode, by the end of episode one, I was like, this is a great show. End of episode five, or during episode five, I was like, this is a brilliant show. But don't worry, there's also plenty of action. You might be like, is this just talking about our feelings? Well, a lot of it, a lot of it. But there's a lot of action as well. Uh, as John And as John and Jane become more experienced, I mean, they start out with shockingly little experience, but that's good because, again, it helps you feel like this could be you. Uh, their missions become bigger, grander, and more dangerous until at the end, the final episode is very much like the movie, which I thought was great. I love that they ended there. I thought, I mean, I worry if people will get to the final episode where it gets the most like Mr. and Mrs. Smith, but I liked building to that. I thought that was great. So the setup here makes this, this version of Mr. and Mrs. Smith, here I'll sell you on it, like the Americans meets Master of None meets Severance. Yes, Severance. Now how on the earth is this like Severance? Well, these two people have never met before and they're paired up as a married couple by a top secret agency who has all their operatives paired up as legally married Mr. and Mrs. Smiths. They don't know who they're working for. We don't know who they're working for. We never see anybody that they're working for. They get their missions via chat on an app. Ah, very much like a video game. And for these missions, they and we get the bare minimum of, of information. So they have to figure out what the mission is and how to handle it 
as it progresses. And again, going in, they have very little spy experience. And the missions escalate in really unexpected and crazy ways. So that also makes it like a video game because you have to play the mission like they do. And I think that's a really neat idea as well. I could see a video game spinning off of this, even though it's a very intellectual grounded show. I'm like, you could do a video game. I think, or, or like a, uh, an interactive live experience. I mean, I think there's like an activation. I think there's a lot of great stuff that could be done here. And I wish they were doing that to promote the show. There should be like an app that you could sign up for that would give you missions in a city and then you could experience ah, I mean like there's so many great ways to advertise this that I think would get people more into it maybe for a season two and it's also fun to not only see John and Jane become better spies I mean some of the things they come up with are so clever you're like wow would I be able to come up with something that clever I mean that's really smart but to see them grow as spies as a couple and as individuals is also incredibly entertaining and wow did this show luck out that Phoebe Waller-Bridge dropped out. She dropped out. Now, I loved Fleabag. I mean, that was also a brilliant show. But ever since, Waller Bridge, I'm sorry to say, has been very grating. And she's not a good match with Glover. She's noticeably taller than him, for one. And since this, this is a show that focuses on the problem of some strong women emasculating men, I think their physical difference would have thrown off the balance of that part of the story and made it seem insurmountable. I mean, here, Maya Erskine is smaller than Glover physically, but very much as equal both in strengths and weaknesses as a performer. For instance, they're both only acceptable as action stars. I mean, at first that works because they're not supposed to have a lot of experience, but they never become like fully fledged action stars. But as I said, they're acceptable. And then when you have the great fight choreography, amazing locations, strong camera work, and other stunt performers in the mix, it ends up being fine, better than fine, but I would have preferred they were a little bit better at fighting. Uh, Erskine's Jane is emasculating for sure, but Erskine plays it as a character flaw, something that has alienated Jane her whole life and that she feels bad about, but she just can't help. Well, at least in the recent past, Waller Bridge has played emasculating as like a badge of honor, and I don't think that would have worked with this show. In fact, she dropped out of Mr. and Mrs. Smith, not for scheduling issues, but because of creative differences with Donald Glover. And when you consider how brilliant this show is, I think it's crazy that she wanted to change any part of it. I'm like, wow. But I mean, again, I think she would have been not a good fit with this show. Donald Glover is fantastic here. Ah, oh, yet again, I love Donald Glover, but I think this is like some of the best stuff he's ever done. Done. And another way that the show flips the usual Hollywood couple's narrative on its head is that here it's John who is the caring and nurturing one, while Jane is the one who is cold and distant. Although today, I think that's becoming more of an issue in terms of flipping, you know, you know, the gender stereotypes. But his John is not a Mr. Mom or like a Mr. Sensitivity. He is ex-military and has real swagger. He's a really cool guy. And I think his John will be relatable to a lot of men and I think just people overall in a really positive way. I think if you, if you relate to either, I found myself relating in some ways to both of them. And I think that's ideal. I think you'll, but I think you might relate to one a little bit more than the other. But, and I think when you do, you'll feel very positive about that, you know, you won't, you'll, you know, but I think also you'll be like, oh yeah, I could work on that too. Just like I think that character should. And as for Erskine, hot off of voicing the lead in Blue Eye Samurai, watch that show, it's so good. That show is a scooch better than this one. Uh, but she creates, an, she creates an incredibly complex character. What a gift of a role. An unflinching look at the modern career woman, pros and cons. Oh, I just absolutely loved this role. Her Jane is not only relatable, but a true accomplishment for Erskine in that she's able to make this Jane so sympathetic, even though she does have such a tough exterior. You love Jane. She's great. You're rooting for her to get over some of these issues that she has. And I think that's because Erskine does the work to figure out where these flaws come from and that some are not flaws, even though they might come off that way, and that some are flaws that she really needs to work on. And she acknowledges that, which I think is great. Being in a relationship is hard. You don't know the other person, especially at first. You have different life experiences and therefore perspectives. And the question really is, are you attracted enough to each other, invested enough in each other, enjoy each other enough to work, to fight, to work, to make the relationship work, to do that work. And that's what this show is about. With the added layer that John and Jane are also partners as assassins, literally depending on the other for their lives. 
But while it is tough for John and Jane, overall the show is very positive about relationships, that they are worth the work, that they are worth fighting for. And I think that's really great to see and makes it great to come out around Valentine's Day. The show also has terrific guest stars. Alexander Skarsgård and Isaac Gonzalez, you know, they, they open up the show. And I think if you don't realize, and I didn't realize this until I watched the show, I watched the first episode twice because I was showing it to somebody else. I was like, you got to see this show. But they're really a take on Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt, which I think is quite clever. But I wish they'd made that a little bit more clear. You might be like, oh, I got it right away. But I, I wish it was a little more clear that's what they were doing. So that's what they're there for. But they also have so many other great guest stars. Parker Posey, Wagner Mora, Michaela Cole, Ron Perlman, John Turturro, Paul Dano, Sarah Paulson, Billy Campbell, and yes, that's Sharon Horgan from Bad Sisters. Ah, oh, what a cast. And I won't give away who anyone is playing because it's all so fun. Behind the camera talent is also top notch. Not only do you have the people from Atlanta, but a lot of new talent as well, a lot of up and coming directors. For instance, Karina Evans directs that fantastic episode five in Lake Como, Italy with tons of action and she really knocks it out of the park. I was very, very impressed. The visual aesthetic of Mr. and, Sm Mr. and Mrs. Smith is hypnotic like a grounded James Bond film. And I'm, you know, some people might be like, who wants a grounded James Bond film? But I'm open to it. I think it's great. And also on that note, sometimes it feels very much like a foreign film, which I think is cool. I think it's cool. And those, mo those movies and shows are doing a little better lately, so maybe this will work. I really hope it does. But to me, I think it gives this Hollywood production a very fresh feel. The score by David Fleming is also excellent. Prime Video, as I said, is releasing Mr. and Mrs. Smith as a binge with all eight episodes dropping on February 2nd, tomorrow, Friday which is fantastic because it is an ideal binge. As I said, I watched it in two days, 48 hours. I think it's perfect for a two night binge. Four, four episodes and four episodes. Fantastic. And again, it's really well positioned coming up to Valentine's Day. Uh, streaming is very competitive right now. And I hope people do find this show. I think the posters are not good enough considering how great the show is. The show is so much more visually uh, cool than the posters. And I hope it gets awards recognition down the line, because as I said, I think the show is so smart and so well executed. And I'm really hoping for a season two. Speaking about taking a risk, the cliffhanger ending for this season is gutsy. Uh, they better get a season two. I mean, it works either way, but I really want a season two. It's extraordinarily clever and entertaining, and I highly recommend it. And I hope you stick with it. I felt that by the end, and first, again, First half hour or so, I was like, what are you doing here, Donald? But by the end of episode one, I was like, oh, wow, this is great. I love it. I love it. And then it still was a little bit of slow burn. And I was kind of like, oh, I lo I'm loving it. I'm loving it, but I'm still a little nervous for you. And then by, again, by episode five, I was like, this is a fantastic show. It goes, it belongs up there with like the best streaming shows. But you got to get to like episode five to get to that level of respect. For, I think maybe even like episode three a little bit, because that's like their first like international mission to a degree where it gets very bond and a little more glamorous. So at least get to episode three. If you're not if you're not in it by episode three, well, then that's too bad. I feel bad. Uh, but, you know, again, I said it's a risk. You know, they went to for intellectual and grounded over sexy fantasy. <laughs> And I'm really glad they let Donald Glover do it. I, I'm glad this show exists, but I, I really, I would like it to be successful. Uh, so again, Prime Video drops the entire season on February 2nd tomorrow, and you should definitely, definitely check it out. I think it builds on the 2005 movie brilliantly and in fact succeeds where that movie failed. And I prefer it much, much, much more to the movie. But I don't know how, if everybody's going to agree with that. All right, share your thoughts down below, subscribe today, and of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.